Hello everyone, my name is Lance, and this is a video tour of the Leftbeard GPS software. This software is designed to run on a Windows-based computer uh, in a farm vehicle, such as a tractor or combine, and it uses GPS data to create a coverage map of where that machine has been, and it can also steer the machine while in the field too. Uh, the main screen looks like this. In the top left corner, we've got the, the quality of your satellite position, uh, whether you're using RTK or DGPS, whatever it's converged to, as well as the number of satellites used in the solution. Uh, latitude and longitude, although you probably don't care about that, and miles per hour, and there's also a minimize and maximize button, just like any other Windows program has. On the right side, there are buttons that are used to navigate through the various screens within the software. Uh, it's designed on the right side so that you can rest your right hand on the right edge of a monitor and use your thumb to navigate through the buttons on a touch screen. At the bottom of the, of the screen is also a couple of buttons that are always there. Uh, in this case, logging, to turn logging on and off, and there's also an auto steer button that would be there if, if you were using that. Uh, the sim, sim button and these two left right arrows are used only when I'm in simulation mode uh, because I'm not actually outside right now using real GPS data. I'm, I'm just simulating that. Uh, within the menus on the right, I'll go through the names menu first. When you click on that, well, actually I should mention that when you go through any of the menus on the right, if you're in a sub-menu, you have a back button here that's always lit up to take you back to that home screen. Uh, the summary here shows you which client, farm, field, and load are selected currently. And then the according buttons down here, you can change different clients and such. Uh, we're going to change to a test, test client, and then we're going to go change to some farm. We'll just do some example farm for right now. And we'll, we'll create a new field. We'll call it just some gibberish. And then we'll create a new load as well. The loads automatically are created with the current date and time, um, just as an easy way of figuring out where it was. Um, typically, as you're driving through a field, you don't want to have to type in the name of a, a load. You can rename it, of course, if you want, but you can also leave it just with the date there as well. Back on the main screen then, uh, you'll notice that lit up my logging button. I had to have a load selected in order to do logging. I'll turn simulation on, and you'll see that the, the machine changes to, from an overhead view. It rolls into a, a like a bird's eye perspective view from behind the machine. I can also zoom out to various levels, and we'll turn logging on so you can see what the coverage map starts to look like. Um, even while I'm moving, I can roll back to a, an overhead view by clicking some of the hidden buttons up behind that main screen or I can roll back into a behind the machine view again which gives more of a, a realistic perspective view from where you are in a cab or if you were above the cab behind the machine. Within the pattern I can select an AB line or create one. In this case I'm just going to pick an A point and you have to drive at least a few feet uh, in order to set a B point. The B point really never gets stored, it's just a heading that's used to generate the line on the screen. If I go back and look at the, the main screen now, I will see that I have a, a current line and then the lines that are to the left and right of me are also lit up too, so I know where those are at. And do a U-turn, you'll see at the top then how it says, instead of the latitude longitude data, I now have turn right and then whatever that distance is between those lines. On the info screen, I have a, a page that shows some basic info that's just kind of generalized. What pass number I'm on, how many satellites, the HDOP, speed, heading, elevation, and, and some other data. Um, if you're using a, an RTK or Omnistar or something like that, the correction age can also be interesting. Um, satellite status shows you where in the sky those satellites are. And Of course, since this is simulation mode, they're kind of in a little bit of a smiley face. Normally, they'd be randomly scattered throughout the sky. Uh, on the right side, it also shows you which, how much uh, signal quality each PRN has. The GPS code shows you the actual NEMA strings coming into the software if you wanted to use those for any sort of diagnostic purposes. Um, steering gives me some information. If you were using auto steer, what angles and what, what information it's using to calculate the proper steering angle of the machine. Um, logs also, everything that happens that's worth logging, I record it to a file for future diagnostic information. If something ever happens and you're wondering why it happened, there's a log file that explains every everything that got clicked every time logging got turned on and off, every time the auto steer got turned on and off, any time a field or farm or load gets changed, any of that information gets logged. And in the settings screen, I have uh, the ability to set what operation we're using, um, which can't be changed because I currently have a load that's active. Uh, I also have a tractor. I can change different tractors 
and the settings that stay, like the dimensions and stuff, stay assigned to that particular machine so I can bounce between a couple of them rather easily. Um, size, dimensions, what GPS information it's using to get that, that data as well. And uh, in, in this case, if I was using a, an auto steer system, I can configure that uh, I.O. connection to that device as well. Implement has some pretty similar stuff too, where I can also configure the size and the dimensions of that machine. Um, if it has an offset to the machine, or if the, uh, the logging point, like if you're using a header, you want to log where the, the sickle bar is. In this case, it's in front of the machine, so it's a negative number. Um, and I also have sounds for, for alerts, such as when logging gets turned on and off, I can play a sound, or when auto steer gets disengaged because you stop, it plays a sound so you know it without having to look at the screen to, to understand what happened. This is the other piece of Left of Beer GPS. This is Left of Beer Office, and it's designed to be used on a home computer or office or, or something like that where you've got a, a regular desktop computer to use. You, you can use it in the in the combine or tractor, of course, if you want to, but the text is a little smaller and it's not quite as easy to navigate with the touchscreen monitor. Um, in this case, I'm going to use an example field, uh, field that we actually did harvest with a combine a few uh, days ago. So it's real GPS data in a map. And when I process that data, it'll show me how many acres it is. Uh, the picture map will display what that looks like in, in, in an overhead map. Um, I can also change the resolution uh, from something that fits to the window. I can change it to like a higher quality. If I wanted to print this map out on a full-size sheet of paper, I can uh, crank up the resolution so that it, it prints in good detail on a, on a larger piece of paper. Um, there's also the interactive map, which is a uh, video game based rendering engine um, and it it allows me to move, transform, rotate, things like that. Something that a regular conventional just bitmap image won't do, which is what that other one is. Um, this allows me to zoom in and ex examine overlap or skips or something like that if I want to do that. Um, in addition, it will also uh, render and, and, excuse me, color the data by elevation, speed, and, and how much cross track error there is. So I can, I can view the elevation data of this field if I wanted to look at that in some sort of a higher quality to see where I have low spots if I, if I need to change uh, water runoff um, patterns and such, waterways and such. Um, speed data, that shows me where I drove faster and slower in the field. For example, if I plug the machine and slowed down for something for whatever reason, that shows up as light spots out here. The darker red, that's uh, where I started driving fast. So for example, right here, there's a, uh, a light spot you can see there. I must have slowed down for, for some reason there. Uh, the cross track error is the other one. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't use auto steer on this particular field, so the cross track error data doesn't really, it's, it's all going to be zero cross track in this case, so it's all the same color. Um, had I been using auto steer, it would show me uh, how far I got off the line, how, basically telling me later on what quality, how, how good did that auto steer system hold that machine to the line across the field. Um, back on the statistics page, there's also a couple options for exporting to KML files. I can either export the, the load data to a KML path showing just some lines, like in Google Earth or something, where that machine drove, or I can also export it as polygons, which shows me the, the coverage map of where that machine went in the field. Um, that's kind of not really that useful, but it's rather interesting data to, to view. Um, anyway, this is a, a quick summary of Leftbridge GPS, and I hope that I, I covered all the main points that are of interest to most people. Um, if you've got any questions, certainly give me an email or, or whatever. Uh, thanks much. Have a good day.